you have in your heart approximately 40,000 specialized cells that are like brain cells, but they're not in your brain. They're in your heart. They're called sensory neurites. Uh, so they're, they are brain-like cells in the heart. They are concentrated in such a degree that, that, that they actually call this the little brain in the heart. So what does this mean? This isn't a metaphor. And I was just in, um, in Europe, and, and many of the people there, they said, well, you know, you're, this is a metaphor, right? It's, you're using this as an analogy. And I'm saying, no, this is literal. These neurites in the heart, the little brain in the heart, they can learn independently from the neurons in our brain. They can think independently from the neurons in our brain. They can remember independently from the neurons in our brain and they communicate with us separately from the neurons in our brain in a language that we may or may not recognize because we are conditioned to see the world through our brain and if we're lucky at some point in our adult lives we get to connect with our hearts so we have now access to these sensory neurites we can work with the brain independently of our heart, and I think most of us know how to do that very well. We can work with the heart independently of the brain. Scientists say it's all about the brain, forget about the heart. And many, uh, I've been around a lot of my friends who say it's all about the heart, forget about the brain. They actually chastise the brain, you know, the, the left brain is this bad thing. But here's, here's what the science is showing us. Both of those ways of viewing ourselves are incomplete. When we marry, the heart and the brain together. When we harmonize the heart and the brain, this is the extended neural network that makes us different from all other forms of life. This is where our deepest empathy, compassion, intuition comes from. And, and so people say, well, why would you want to do something? You know, what, what would be the purpose of harmonizing your heart and your brain? But it means more if you know that there's something very, very special about this. So when we are able to harmonize the little brain in the heart with the big brain in the head, we can do that. Heart-brain harmony, so many benefits, and they, they're different from one another. But for example, we can process information very, very quickly. Uh, I mean, really fast information recall. And, and here's it makes sense. Here's the reason why. Because when we access information with our heart, with our intuition, we don't go through the logic and the fear and all the self-esteem and all the doubt that we have in our brain with our our ego and our mental functions our heart doesn't work that way and affirmations are very very powerful tools uh, to implement change in our lives anytime but they are especially potent here's the key they are especially potent if we are communicating with our subconscious in a language the subconscious recognizes through channels that the subconscious recognizes so when we harmonize our heart and our brain, what we're doing is we're opening, it's a hotline to the subconscious. That's where we would introduce uh, our affirmations of our perfect relationships or our healing. This is uh, where the healing begins in our bodies. Uh, extraordinary states of intuition, deep intuition uh, are available through this harmonizing of the heart and the brain. And there are three key steps to harmonizing the heart and the brain. Uh, and the first one, it sounds obvious, and there may be a little bit more to it than what we've been led to believe. It is, I'm, I'm inviting you to shift your awareness from your thinking mind into your heart. We are so conditioned to being in our mind that sometimes when we're asked to do that, we say we're in our heart, but we're still in our mind thinking about it. So what I'm gonna invite you to do is something I've learned from my indigenous friends all over the world, shamans, uh, yogis, uh, monks, nuns, abbots in the monasteries, and they all do the same thing. I'm going to invite you to gently touch your heart center in a way that's comfortable for you. It can be with a single finger right over your sternum. Uh, it can be with an open palm as they do in the Mayan traditions and in the, some of the Middle Eastern traditions. Buddhists will create a prayer mudra and actually nestle their prayer mudra right there, right there in the little hollow in their chest, that gentle pressure, whatever way is comfortable. 
for you. And here's the thing. Here's why this is important. Because your awareness will always go to the place in your body where you feel the touch, where you feel the sensation. So in whatever way is comfortable for you to touch your heart center now, that will draw your awareness and that will promise that you have shifted from your mind into your heart. It's step number one. And I'm going to do the same right here. So just allow your awareness to move to the place where you feel that touch. Step number two is I'm going to invite you now going to invite you to slow your breathing just a little bit to maybe five seconds on the inhale or five seconds on the out breath the exhale or whatever is comfortable for you and here's why this is important this sends a very very powerful signal to your body the first signal shifting from your mind to your heart that says I'm turning my attention inward that's powerful second signal right now is when you slow your breathing the only time you would breathe this way is when you are in a place where you feel safe so you're telling your body right now I am in a place that's safe and that frees your body to let go the stress hormones and the feelings of stress and when that happens it awakens the healing chemistry because your body can only do one or the other so now that we're letting go of those stress hormones we're now giving our body permission to awaken the healing chemistry in our bodies powerful immune response anti-aging hormones all of those So we're breathing a little slower from the place where we feel the touch, telling our body we're safe. All right, the third step. This is very, very key. It's very powerful and very potent. Is about feeling. I'm going to invite you now to create a feeling in your heart where you feel the touch, where you're breathing. To the best of your ability, if you can feel one or some combination of the following four feelings. Care for anything or anyone. Appreciation for anything or anyone gratitude or compassion care appreciation gratitude compassion and what the researchers have found is that these four key words will trigger the experience between our heart and our brain to create that coherence point one Hertz best of your ability feel those feelings as you breathe from your heart center in the place where you feel the touch I'm going to give you just a moment to do that I'm doing the same right here If you'll take one more deep breath, please. And as you release that breath, what I want you to know is this act, this very ancient, very primal act, it is the key to the deepest truth of who you are as an individual, who you are in this world.
this is where the super learning comes from or when you're working to solve or create something new a new painting a new piece of music to write a book to create poetry something new it comes from this deep space this is the process that gives you resilience to a changing world and allows you to embrace change in a really healthy way so I invite you now to take one more deep breath into overdrive from doing this right now it lasts over six hours and all you did was to have a feeling and to breathe in the most natural way and I've had people say to me Greg it can't be that simple and I say you know I believe it is precisely this simple because we live in a world that is simple until we make it complex nature is simple science is simple until we we use big words and and a lot of equations uh, to describe that world but it all comes down to you and me earth and God and that relationship has to be a simple relationship.